Studying pharmacology is tough. We make it easier by taking difficult drug names like benzyl penicillin, which sounds similar to bent pencil chillin, to make a comical character to help you ace that test. Let's go. In this video, we will be talking about antibiotics that act by inhibiting the synthesis of bacterial cell walls. This is the first of a three-part series on antibiotics. One of the other videos will discuss antibiotics that inhibit protein synthesis, and the other will discuss antibiotics that inhibit nucleic acid synthesis. This scene brings us into the cellar of someone's home. The sign saying bacterial cell wall reminds you these antibiotic medications inhibit the formation of bacterial cell walls. Brrr! It's cold down here. It's chilling all the penicillins. Cephalosporins appear to be suffering from macrocephaly, and the mice have taken over the van under the tree, and there is an interesting pen located on the wall. Now, before we get into what medications the characters represent, let's talk a little bit about these medications. Bacteria have a peptoglycan cell wall, and most of these type of antibiotics will inhibit the formation of this wall through a beta-lactam ring in their molecular structure. This beta-lactam ring binds to transpeptidases, also known as penicillin binding proteins, thereby preventing the formation of crosslinks in the cell wall. As a result, an increased osmotic gradient forms between the inside and outside of the cell wall, leading to leakage and degradation of the cell contents. Clinically useful families of beta-lactam compounds include penicillins, cephalosporins, monobactams, and carbapenems. All the medications we will be talking about today are beta-lactams, with one exception, which we will talk about in greater detail later in the video. Unfortunately, some bacteria have evolved over time and are able to counter the effects of beta-lactam antibiotics through the production of beta-lactamase, which breaks down the beta-lactam ring structure in these drugs. When bacteria have this resistance, beta-lactamase resistant antibiotics or beta-lactamase inhibitors can be used. Today, we will be looking at six different penicillin-based antibiotics. To remember which characters they represent, just remember that the penicillins are chillin. Penicillin medications are split into narrow spectrum, broad spectrum, and antipseudomonal classes. Narrow spectrum penicillins cover mostly gram positive infections. There are two narrow spectrum penicillins in this picture benzyl penicillin and flucloxacillin. The bent pencil chillin represents benzyl penicillin. Bent pencil chillin, benzyl penicillin. Benzyl penicillin is also known as penicillin G and has the greatest activity against gram positive gram cocci non-beta-lactamase producing anaerobes. The thermometer representing the flu with the clock who is chillin is flucloxacillin. Flu clock chillin, flucloxacillin. Flucloxacillin is one of the few beta-lactamase medications that is beta-lactamase resistant. There are two broad-spectrum penicillins in this picture which act on both gram-positive and gram-negative bacterial groups. Amp-chillin represents ampicillin. Amp-chillin, ampicillin. An ox-chillin represents amoxicillin. An ox-chillin, amoxicillin. Due to the possibility of beta-lactamase producing bacteria, certain beta-lactam antibiotics are often combined with beta-lactamase inhibitors. A common combination is amoxicillin with clavulanic acid, often called coamoxiclav. There are two antipseudomonal penicillins in this picture. The tiny car chillin represents ticarcillin. Tiny car chillin, ticarcillin. And the pipe chillin represents piperacillin. Pipe chillin, Piperacillin. An important note to keep in mind when prescribing or dispensing penicillins is that it is a common drug allergy, 
so it's important to ask. Let's move on to the cephalosporins. Cephalosporins are derived from a fungus called acrimonium, previously called cephalosporium. There are considered five generations of cephalosporins. Each generation has different clinical efficacy against specific types of bacteria. Each newer generation has significantly greater gram-negative antimicrobial properties than the preceding generation and, in most cases, decreased activity against gram-positive organisms. Except when it comes to the fourth and fifth generation cephalosporins, as they generally also have good gram-positive activity. The cephalosporins are represented on the shelving unit with four shelves, each representing one of the first four generations of cephalosporins. The poster just above it on the wall represents one of the fifth generation cephalosporins. You can remember that these characters are all cephalosporins because they all have large heads. Cephalic is defined as of or relating to the head. So when you see this shelving unit of characters with large heads, think cephalic, which reminds you that each of these medications starts with the sound ceph, cephalic, ceph. The first shelf contains the first generation cephalosporin, cephalexin, represented by the falling head, cephal, cephalexin. The second shelf contains the second generation medication, cephiroxime, represented by the furry character, cephir, cephiroxime. The third shelf represents third generation cephalosporins, of which two medications are being represented. Ceftriax reminds you of ceftriaxone, ceftriax, ceftriaxone. And the dime, which is a 10 cent American or Canadian coin, which in this odd case will be pronounced as deem, represents ceftazidime, ceftime, ceftazidime. The fourth generation cephalosporins are on the top shelf, of which there are two examples in our picture. They cover an extended spectrum of activity against gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. The pine cone represents cephapim, cephpine, cephapim. The pyrotechnic represents cephpyrome, cephpyro, cephpyrome. An example of a fifth generation cephalosporin is a tarot card poster on the wall representing cephteraline. Ceftero, ceftaroline. Examples of other important drugs that target bacterial cell walls include meropenem, astrionam, and vancomycin. Meropenem and astrionam are both beta-lactam antibiotics, so their mode of action is similar to penicillins and cephalosporins. The bone with the marrow showing that's been shaped into a pen represents Meropenem. Meropen, meropenem. The A to Z alphabet tree represents astrionem. A Z tree, astrionem. The last medication that we are going to talk about is vancomycin, represented by the van taken over by mice. Van mice, vancomycin. Vancomycin is a non beta lactam antibiotic that targets gram-positive bacterial cell walls. It works by inhibiting cell wall synthesis by binding to the terminal of the growing peptide chain during cell wall synthesis, resulting in inhibition of transpeptidase, preventing further elongation and cross-linking of the peptoglycan matrix. Vancomycin is an extremely important medication as it treats infections such as MRSA, which produces low affinity penicillin binding protein 2A, which confers cross resistance to most beta lactams. All right, folks, that's it for this video. To learn more about visual mnemonics and antibiotics, including mechanisms of action and side effects, please visit our website at visuallearner.net. Happy studying!